Um, but there's a lot of people also that reached out that were asking about, you know, aliens and abductees and the military abductee programs and getting freedom from that. So I don't know if that's something that that you've experienced or know about, but I wanted to touch on it just because some people wanted to know, um, wanted to get your thoughts on aliens, UFOs, uh, and the military abductee programs. And if you have advice for anybody who may be suffering or, uh, you know, being tortured by these programs. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I was doing this uh, work at a treatment house in Boulder, Colorado. It was called AIM House. And we had this red pill group. I mentioned it before, but it was like a group where people could ask any questions. And a lot of them wanted to talk about aliens at the time. <clears throat> there was a guy, I used to listen to a lot of guys, L.A. Marzulli. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he has a book or a series of videos, documentaries and stuff called On the Trail of the Nephilim. And this guy, Steve Quayle and Timothy Alvarino and Josh Peck and these people at Skywatch TV and these news, man, I was all into the alien study and stuff. I spent a lot of years just saturated in that. He had a book that was uh, ETs and the Vatican, um, Exo Vaticanus, I think was the name of his book that Tom Horn, he just died recently, but Tom Horn, they have a lot of really good resources in uh, um, Cherubim, yeah, I lost the name. Josh Peck is the author. Okay. And it's called like Cherubim Chariots or something like that. But okay. I, at, um, fundamentally, I believe on one side of this, you're dealing with Ophanum. Okay. Ophanum is like a class of spiritual entities that are chariots. They're like, you go back to Ezekiel on these like wheels within wheels and these visions that he sees of these chariots flying around. You know what I mean? And he's looking at transdimensional stuff. He's looking at things that are like, not just in one realm. He's looking between the realms of multiple dimensions. And so he's seeing these compression of like, face of a man and an ox and an eagle and a, and a bull. And he's seeing all of this compression of space and time all at the same time. And that's because there's a, there's a distortion between time when these alphonums show up. Okay. And they are generally like uh, orb bodies, right? They're like literally what a lot of people see as these like balls of light. These are literally the bodies. I, I believe on one side of it, I'm not going to talk about military tech side. Just hold on. We're going to hold our hats on that side. We'll get there. On one side of it, there's these physical beings that operate in a spiritual and physical realm that are like literally the vehicles for these entities to move themselves around with, okay? And they are literally called in the scriptures, Ophanum. Your, your Bible may not say that word, but that's the word. They just don't use it in English very often. That's literally these beings that are, their, their job is to carry stuff around. Their spirit is in this wheel. Like that's literally their nefesh. Their life is this, is this vehicle. So on one side of it, I believe that that is literally what people are dealing with and some of their encounters, their experiences is that they're dealing with Ophanum. They're dealing with these spirits that have a physical corporal body that's a vehicle. That's all they are. And so they are carriers and can carry inside them other beings, other other spirit beings and other physical beings. And so on one side of it, you have to deal with that equation and trying to sort through whether or not you're dealing with that side component of it this is why when you go to places where there's a lot of dark activity like um, people that do ghost investigations and people that are going to like battlefield sites people that are investigating you know poltergeist activities when they take pictures they take videos you'll see these balls of light these orbs of light that's the the things that you're dealing with you're dealing with some of those entities manifesting so on one side of it you have righteous ones that have not rebelled and that have not like fallen and left their righteous state that are carriers of messengers, angels moving around in between our realms that, that could be detected, could be seen. They could be coming to do good things and righteous things. And then you have another side, you have fallen sides, you have fallen cherubs, you have fallen Ophanum, you have fallen seraphim. These are the different classes of hierarchies of, of rebel angels, messengers, Malachim, these, these beings that have rebelled. Okay. They are ones that also have partnered with human agents on this side of the realm to reveal to them technological components of this so that they can design and build their own art, their own craft for this. Okay. And this goes back to like a lot of this. If you go back into the Nazis, you go back into the 1930s and you got to go back actually to the late 18th century, late 19th century, early 20th century, when there's these societies from like theosophists and these other ones that were real society and people that were starting to impart a lot of this knowledge, this gnosis from what I believe are the fallen watchers that were released, the watchers that had sex with women and left their heavenly estate like he talks about in the scriptures and mingled themselves with men, gave birth to giants, these Nephilim and their descendants after them. They are the ones who reveal a lot of these secrets to them. And one of the fundamental secrets that they reveal is technological information on how to make weaponry, warcraft. They teach them 
secret sciences like that. And so at the fundamental base of the kingdom of darkness is a war. They want they want weaponry. They want advanced weaponry. And the way that they do that is they trade human assets for it. So they trade physical women, children, people, humans to be tortured, abused, traumatized, consumed, drained of their life, uh, turned into slaves. And that's literally a, a legal exchange. They swear an oath in order to do that. They, they swear binding those and contracts with these other beings that might appear to them has all kinds of stuff. There was a book that was called uh, They Walk Among Us. I can't remember the author. Maybe you can look that up. <clears throat> there was like a whole book series we went through. All we, we started, so in that Red Pill group, we started reading all of these different books, right? I was like, okay, if you guys want to talk about this stuff, we're going to read it from multiple different angles. We're going to read it from a totally secular view. We're going to read it from a Christian view. We're going to read it from you know a military view. We're going to look at it from all the different angles because I think what it does is it helps to shine the light on the topic that is otherwise pretty gray. And so- if you, as you start to examine that and you start to read abductees account, because I, I can't say their name, but I had a client there who was uh, from a very powerful family in New York. He was suffering from abductions. Okay. As long as he could remember so from when he was a child, he would lay in his bed at night. He would have this paralysis. He would have this just complete paralysis over his body. A bright light would shine into his room and he would be levitated out of his bed and taken outside of his house and he would be taken into a craft and he would have experimentation done on him. Okay, He suffered from trauma, physical trauma, psychological trauma from that for years of his life. His testimony is not something that people should just discount because it's not in their realm of normal. At the end of the day, he physically would wake up in the middle of the night screaming. I used to do night watch there, and he would scream. He would have night terrors, okay? That, I believe, on one side of it, you can be dealing with somebody that's dealing with sleep paralysis. That's a literal spiritual attack that's taking place, okay? I, I recommended to him to read Psalm 91 out loud. Like, I have seen people who suffer paralysis, abduction experiences, have it stop at the name of Jesus, have it stop at the name of Yeshua. Like, stop it. Stops it, which shows me that there is a legal hierarchy that's still in play, even when you're dealing with something that may be technological and spiritual. I've seen, I, I've got to see survivors of abductee experiences have deliverance from those same encounters taking place, and they stop when they start to have power encounters with the the judge of all the earth. Like, so it tells me there's there's two major components of it. Sometimes you're dealing with physical aircraft physical agents, man-made agents and assets, and other times you're dealing with spiritual ones. So you've got to kind of ferret through a lot of that to be able to get to the root of it because people are experiencing great troubles at, at night and in their sleep. And I, I lived in an area that's very, very famous um, outside of Snowflake, Arizona, and in Sholo, Arizona, and an area that had a very famous encounter of these beings that were coming there. And I was there on the Apache reservations where people were doing rituals to try to get these beings to come there and open these gates. And other people that were in the town that weren't participants in this stuff were, were talking about UFOs, having sightings of UFOs, while at the same time, I know my family and well, not just my, my bloodline family, the coven was specifically opening doors to try to get these spirits to come in and give them divine powers and give them rituals of downloads of information. So like, I know for certain there's overlap between those realms where people on one side are experiencing Experiencing this affliction, and I know it's spiritually based, but I also believe, yes, a lot of this is also unidentified aircraft that people just have no understanding of. There's drones, there's technology, the Liberty Bell. There's all these stuff that's been people, dark sciences, the X projects. There's a guy who's called the Dark Journalist. He's uh, got a YouTube channel and other other platforms. He deals with a whole lot of the technological side of this for the pro X class projects uh, over history. That's a great series if you guys want to go investigate that further. Thank you so much for answering that. That's that's always sort of a controversial question too, or a topic, just like the targeted individual, you know? So it's, it is really, that's been something really fascinating to me to learn about is just the different perspectives on the alien UFO and understanding that a lot of, you know, what we're introduced to as the public with this technology is stuff that humans actually have access to, you know, and how far ahead technology is underground versus, you know, the iPhones and computers that society sees. It's so, you know, just uh, above and beyond anything. I think if you haven't seen it, if you're somebody that is wondering about this, you know, it's probably hard for, for you to comprehend this type of thing. I know it is for me too. And whenever I hear about stuff like this from you and other survivors, it just blows my mind. And I can't even imagine how far they are now you know, this, a lot of the stuff that I've heard was from, you know, whenever you were a child or other people were a lot younger, 
you know, and to think about where they're at now with some of these technologies that could be around us, you know, and, and then feeding into the, the TI program, the frequencies and just all these different technologies that we, we just have no idea about. So it is really fascinating getting to learn that from you um, and hearing a little bit more about that. Um, I wanted to talk about a different type of, I guess, muzzle in a sense, which would be more of the demonic attachment side of things, the familiar spirits. I had a couple questions about that. And one in particular, hearing your perspective on Satan's army and demonic attachment and DID individuals. Um, so wanted to sort of open that up to you because I think that's also an important topic. Heck yeah. Which one of those do you want to launch with? Let's start maybe with the demonic attachment and DID individuals and your thoughts on that. Hmm. Yeah. Well, this was like, like actually one of the last books Russ Dizdar published. It's called Expelling Darkness and Engaging Non-Human Entities Now and in the End of Days. If you guys email dizdarbooks at gmail.com, she's got a lot of the she, – she had a lot of these available. I just talked about it on the SGT report, so it may be blown up pretty good. But he deals a lot with dealing with demonic attachments in DID. Then his series of – let me just show you guys another website here. If you guys want to see a lot – if you actually want to get into the minutia of a lot of this, let me just send you to a better website that uh, has a much deeper resource on it. Shatterthedarkness.net. Let me share a screen here with you guys. This Great. is uh, this is his website, okay? And he has he has a training courses in here, all kinds of stuff, okay? This is from his main website, Shatterthedarkness.net. So if you go down in here, he has a series in here that's called Freedom Encounters, okay? Basic course on healing, deliverance, and restoration of ritually abused SRA and MPD. So there's a lot here, y'all. This is like a more almost like a counselor's level course of you know 25 different sections. And a lot of these are part twos and threes and all this stuff. But he goes through an incredible amount of detail in discussing how to deal with demonic attachments in DID. But at the fundamental core of it, uh, so there's there's that for you guys. Dive in there. You could you could spend 45 or probably more hours dealing with that. When a mind is split and it's all about the will at the end of the day, everything that is dealing with abuse and trauma and DID is about an imposition of someone else's will on your will. And so demons fundamentally are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. We've talked about that a little bit earlier. They don't have a corporate body in this realm to be able to engage with their lusts. Okay. They are always hungry and never able to be satisfied. They're always thirsty and never able to drink. They can't physically enact their desires and their wills with their own bodies anymore because they're bound in between the spirit realm and the earth realm. And so they're stuck here. It's like a prison planet for them, y'all. Because of that, they're looking for skin suits. They're looking for human agents to be able to occupy, to engage in these activities, to enact their lusts. That imposition of their will on mankind is what drives so much of this dark agenda because they want physically to enact the will of the of the that ancient hate upon the hands of men they want to raise up an army at the end of the day that's that's their fundamental deep desires to raise up an army that is going to to wage a war against the son of righteousness that's that's where it all is driving to it's revelation 19 is like the son of the son of man coming back that white rider on the white horse, when all the earth's armies are gathered to wage war on him, he literally has to build that army early on. And so the shattering of the mind, the deliberate destruction of someone's free will is fundamental basis to all DID. You, you have literally a gift from your creator to help you to survive impossible things. No one should have to experience trauma and abuse, ongoing destabilization. No one. But we have a gift that allows us to dissociate it, separate ourselves from that. But when you do that and you create a fresh personality or blank slate, when you when you have that and you have a uh, sexual trauma, abuse, rape that's taking place during the course of that event, there is a spiritually transmitted disease that is so often brought in intentionally, invoked. Like you have somebody who is trained in that to bring in a spirit to enforce the programming, to to hold captive that individual. Like people, a lot of times, I had a survivor share a story of of that recently who I did an interview with and like that they had a door in their mind for like throughout their life that they just this horrible black door. And every time they thought about it, they were like almost sick and they could not get through it. And it was years and years of, of seeking 
intimacy with the father and a relationship with him and like developing maturity before they were able to actually look at the door with the Messiah with them and realize at the end of the day, it was like the door was literally a demon. The door was a demon that was keeping them from seeing this memory. That's that's that was put there by design, but during the course of the abuse, that that demon is there to try to keep the person from coming to the truth. That demon is there to try to hold the trauma in place. They want to hold that trauma in. If you have the spirits that attach to the person, it allows them to be able to control them and hold them in that bondage for a lot longer. It's horrible. And it keeps them from coming to the place of freedom because they they hit this wall of resistance, this this internal tremor like that that doesn't want to get out. And so like there is a major component that requires strategic, deliberate deliverance. Okay. Like it requires expelling that demon. It requires expelling that stronghold, a strong man that's inside them, binding it and casting it out of them to give them freedom, to give them restoration. Because otherwise, you don't know sometimes if you're dealing with a personality or are you dealing with a demon, you know, and it's, it's sometimes very messy and it requires discernment. There is a chapter in here that I wanted to read from. This is on page uh, 226. It kind of captures just the fundamental basis of it. It's in Ephesians 2, it says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the age of this world and according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we also once lived in the lusts of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the je- devil, 1 John 3, 8, and that includes his power and ownership of you. Look at Colossians 1.10 and see that you were once under the rule or dominion of Satan, but you have been taken out of that and been transferred into the rule, power, and protection of the kingdom of Christ. You are now a child of light, and Ephesians 5 gives you a great unveiling of it. Read Ephesians 5 and see that you are now in Christ and a child of light, God's light. And because of that, you are now commanded to expose the evil deeds of darkness. Here is part of the goal of your salvation. Satan power expelled from you. And now as a believer in Jesus, it is our goal in evangelism for others. As in Acts 26, I now send you to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. True salvation is ground zero for expelling darkness. Satan's works, rights, and influences off, out, and over us. You are what you are now. This new life is detailed all in the New Testament as a relationship with God in Christ. To see what you are and have in Christ, you can do a quick reading of Ephesians 1, 2 Peter 1, and look at how often 2 Corinthians 5. It all begins to reveal this new life in Christ. Therefore, if any man is Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Look, all things have become new. All this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. This fundamentally, it requires like a renewing of your identity. And even though like on your core, for a lot of people, even if your core identity is a strong believer, is already understanding of a lot of this stuff, or somebody that's not, you have to deal with expelling that darkness out of them in order for them to be able to enter in to restoration of identity. And so I, that's why like we've talked about before, Emma, I don't believe you can really get total deliverance without an identity restoration through through the Messiah. Like he is the judge of all the earth that has the authority to actually drive out these spirits that are far more powerful and smarter than any of us. Like don't ever think that these immortals can't smoke you psychologically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. These things can tear you to pieces, y'all. And they are very, very good at doing all kinds of stuff to make you terrified. So like when you're dealing with survivors, when you're dealing with people that that are another personality comes forward, sometimes this demonic horde comes forward with them. And it's absolutely destabilizing. It's very scary if you've never dealt with that stuff. If you don't have any experience in spiritual warfare, you better stick and learn it really quick because if you want to enter into this field, you're going to be fundamentally interlocked. Like people that are being physically and sexually abused get transference of horrible demonic strongholds that come into their life. And you've got to be able to engage that stuff and deal with that stuff because they need healing. They need restoration of their identity. And so once you can drive out that demonic, you got to give them a restoration of their identity, their purpose, because 
so much of that imprinting is just, I'm a guardian, I'm a runner, I'm a sex slave. Like that's all I am. That's all I've ever going to be. And so you have to restore to them a new purpose, a new identity. Like you have to literally help them understand something so fundamental that that's not all you were made for. That's not all you were here for. So you have to eradicate those lies. You have to eradicate that deceit and you have to bring them restoration of the truth, bring them re restoration of a new purpose. Great answer. That was a really good question too. It's, it's fascinating learning all about this. And let's go back to familiar spirits, which essentially are, you know, spirits of dead people. Um, I'd love to hear any insights you have on that. The person that had wrote the question said that she had experienced paranormal experiences as a child that felt very demonic um, in that way. And she was inquiring about the familiar, familiar spirits um, and maybe just some advice on how to, you know, rid your life of those also. You know, you said familiar spirits. I'll just say two things. First, first off, familiar spirits aren't necessarily just like you can have dead ancestor familiar spirits side of it. But like I would look at familiar spirits more from a lens of like generational curses, mm. generational spirits that have been like the, the the guardian over the family demonically or spiritually, like principality over the family, like my family's principality over them is death. Like that's literally the the familiar spirit that my family operates under. That's the the inherited, the multi-generational God they serve is death. So like that's where their covens are. That's who they're like, that's their boss. So on one side of it, that's, you're going to have an overarching like family spirit that's going to rule and govern over you, your family and, and direct you generationally. You'll see there's a stronghold of alcoholism people will say they're like there's some kind of genetic problem it's not a genetic thing y'all like these are these are literally family spirits that that come on and are passed down like why there's there's incest going generationally is because that's literally one of the family spirits that is passed down so <clears throat> on one side you can be dealing with yes spirits of dead ancestors are, are one thing that you can look at but i generally think that most people are actually dealing with is not uh is not that they're dealing with their actual family's generational spirit. That's like the one that's been on their their bloodline for a long time. And it, I, I'm a huge advocate of people breaking and renouncing their curses of generational curses of Freemasonry and of breaking of any of these oaths that family swear, because part of that is um, here. I'll share another, I'm sharing another website. Hold on. This is a real important one. They took this one down, but I found it. <laughs> oh, Suckers. I got you. Here, <laughs> let me show you this one. I got this. Uh, this is on my website. It's also in the description of every one of my videos now because I'm like, you go get them, y'all. This is a book someone handed me. They printed out this website. <clears throat> this is with the Wayback Machine. You guys rock for whatever, whatever good that is. Anyways, uh, this is uh, Freedom from Generational Curses of Freemasonry. This was compiled by Isaiah 54 Ministries. That's the website that got taken down. But this is this is not a joke, y'all. This is like you want to engage in some serious kick in the teeth spiritual warfare stuff. You better deal with the generational curses that have been spoken over you and your family forever. Because this in this country, y'all, this new Atlantis that you live in, it's not the Amer United States of America, the corporation. Like you live in the states, the United States of death. You know, like this is the land of the plume serpent. That's the god they serve here, and they are. This land was built to to give them the freedom of religion to practice occult workings. It is not for you to be able to say what you want to say about truth. It's so that they can say what they want to say and do all the wickedness. That's it. You'll see that at the end of it, this this nation was established to bring forth Luciferians. At the end of the day, you'll watch and see the fruit. <clears throat> Anyways. They they have a legal right when they when they go through these degrees, first degree and second degree. This is the renunciation of that, by the way. This is like your weapon against that is is repenting for it, saying like I no longer agree that whatever my great great grandpa, whoever the heck he was, said about all this stuff and cursed my family line and and agreed to all these things and it's not going to say this stuff. These are the the specific renunciations of those different degrees as they ascended through this this inverse pyramid of poison. They started swearing stuff specifically to curse their generations, their their genealogies after them. Okay, they're cursing that, and when they're doing that, they're imbuing, they're calling upon a familiar spirit to be placed upon their their generational line. And so this is based off of these are like the breaking of it because you say this stuff. I'm not going to read any of this stuff out loud because it's freaking disgusting. Anyways, <clears throat> Triners, thirty third degree, all other degrees. It goes through all this stuff, and it's not just Freemasons. He deals with Druids, Foresters, Orange Elks, Moose. Moose and Eagle Lodge, the Ku Klux Klan, the Grange, the Woodmen of the Wild, Riders of the Red Robe, the Knights of Pythias. There's so many disgusting, the, the Knights of De La Mole, the Knights of Columbus. Y'all, there's so many just infectious, filthy perverts out there with all their like man, boy, love, child rape associations and all of their disgusting, sycophantic, pervert stuff. Anyways, 
fundamental basis of this, they curse their generations to the third and fourth generation by committing iniquity. That's like open, continual, ongoing rebellion. They like incur the curse, okay? That generational spirit, that familiar spirit then says, takes the blessings, the generational blessings that should be on those children to the third and fourth generation and then gives them to the to the person swearing the oath. That's why that person gets rich. That's why that person has all the connections, the health they live to 100 years old. That's why they're so blessed. Whereas then for generations, you'll see this utter horror show following them. Like why some people are like, my life just never, ever goes well. Because a lot of people are dealing with specific generational curses that's being enforced by the familiar spirit that was put there by their great uncle. You know what I mean? Like this is a legal right on your bloodline for this spirit to come in and torment you and steal from you according to what they've already given away. And so when you renounce those things, you're breaking off, you're cutting off that power source and you're binding that familiar spirit and casting it out. It's also a major, like, it's a major changing of the guard. Like you're going to be, you're going to have to deal with, you need to replace that with, with blessing. Anytime you bind anything in the spiritual realm, you need to lose something else into that space. Like loose the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the set up our spirit into that place to cleanse it and fill it. Like you need, you need a replacement there. You can't, otherwise you're going to just clean the house out and then seven worse demons are going to come in, show up and beat your lunch. You know what I mean? So like, don't engage in this stuff. I don't like pray for people for deliverance unnecessarily. Like there's a lot of people I don't pray for them to have their demons cast out of them unless like they're really committed to changing their life because it's, they'll be worse off than if we hadn't done that. Like it's not worth going down the road of deliverance. You guys, if you're just going to keep going into that realm, if you're going to keep going and engage in this stuff, it's going to get worse for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for that. I, I've become more privy to that recently. I had never understood, you know, even generational trauma. That's something that I think is new for a lot of people, even watching the show, just to understand how that's passed down. But the curses, the stuff that might not be as I identifiable, right? Like you could have somebody in a family that maybe never experienced a lot of trauma and has had a pretty, you know, great life. But like you said, there's just all these little things that might go wrong or they might have relationship problems or whatever it is. There's something in their life that just, you know, something doesn't click ever. And they're thinking, well, what's going on? What's going on? You know, being able to take that high level perspective and to say, okay, well, I might not have contributed to whatever's happening, but what in my bloodline may have that I'm carrying, you know, and to realize our power and cleansing ourselves from that, you know, and, and that there are people out there who have been privy to that and who have created these awesome resources to help us with that. So thank you for sharing that too. And that was on the way back machine, you said? Yeah, it's on, it's on my website under recent resources as well if they go to snatch from the flames.com under resources yeah, that, that links there that too we got to show people your website upgrades uh sometime during this podcast too oh, it's yeah. so awesome what you've done yeah i've got a couple hundred resources in there <laughs> <laughs> it's, great. it's awesome so you guys can just go to nathan's website and find that um i'm gonna read another inquiry that somebody had she said i want to hear more on the reptilian aspect the serpent seed change the change and what is done for it you want to speak on behalf of that? I would say, well, first of all, I've talked a little bit about, I don't use the word reptilian, y'all. I'm, I'm really pretty, pretty adamant that these things are dracon, like these are dragons, you know? I don't think they're just lizards. I think they get a, they get, they got a good branding campaign out there to call them reptilians. They are dragons. People fundamentally cross-culturally forever have understood a dragon is not the thing in that. That is not the thing you want to be interacting with in the same way. They're known as tricksters. They're known as deceivers. They're known as beguilers and they're known as ravagers. Like they bring luck and fortune and all this other stuff and foretelling. But you know what? At the trade is fundamentally those same things that we were talking about earlier with these fallen angels. Seraphim are, are like serpentine in nature. They were like a, the divine being that are the ones flying around Yahuwah's throne saying, holy, holy, holy is Yahuwah Elohim Almighty who was and is and is to come. They're these like multi-winged ones, but they're very serpentine in nature. And because of that, when they rebel, like they get cursed with trans, like transfiguration in the most horrible kind of way. They go from being these beautiful beings of light to these most horrible looking creatures, grotesque, grotesque, awful looking things. I'm not dealing with just the physical, like actual dragon side of, of reality here. I'm talking about like 
the beings that get cursed and sent down onto the earth and inside the earth in order to live as a, as a form of punishment. <clears throat> There's a literal seed line of those beings as well. They have children, they have offspring. Okay. And they are literally sons of the dragon. They're literal sons of the serpent. Like this is why Yeshua says in Luke, like he says, like, behold, I send you out and I give you power to tread on serpents, dragons, and lions like he gives us power to tread on these things the scorpion you shall trample underfoot this is why psalm 91 is such a fundamentally powerful scripture because like you he literally is giving you the authority to tread on even this level of deity these monsters that are literally under our feet and the reason they live down in these subterranean places is because they're persecuted so heavily when they're above the ground they are they are hunted down because they're obsessed with bloodshed they live off the blood of people that's because in the garden and Adam, <clears throat> Adam's punishment was that he was from dust. He was created and the dust. He's going to return. He's going to work by the sweat of his face until he dies in order to eat bread. The enemy, the adversary, he cursed him. He took his legs off of him. He took his ability to fly around and be this beautiful, magnificent being. And he cursed him to crawl on his belly and eat dust all the days of his life. He's cursed to eat dust. And what is man? We are dust. This is why they're obsessed. They're literal fuel source in order for them to have interactions and survivability they they physically drink and consume the blood of mankind that's why there is people who are willing to make deals with them go down into the underground spaces like this is why hitler and had all of his little secret occultists going out all over the earth scouring the tunnels and building deep underground military bases and going out into these the tibetan societies and they're trying to have access to what he believed was the vril that as they were called like he wanted to be able to talk to these beings that are said to live under in these underground subterranean cities now they're real places we're going to talk a lot about more of this next week when em and i are doing a show with with uh, a couple other amazing mighty warriors but fundamentally they make legal exchanges with these people and as long as you continue and you continue to feed them people human beings that as cattle as as a meat source as a supply source they give you technologies they give you mines and metals and and super rare earth metals like neptunium some of these other really uh not naturally occurring elements that are around that you can use to build spacecrafts that you can use to build ships that you travel around in or monorails like there's this whole other underworld that operates underneath our feet and that operates because these people have deals with dragons okay and so there's there's dominions there's seeds of the dragons there's there's bloodlines of the dragon that are here on the surface and they have the divine right to rule as kings dr or uh Gary Wayne's book, The Genesis 6 Conspiracy, has a great section on why these people are the divine right of kings, um, <clears throat> the, the blood-drinking kings of Kish, and his section number seven is called The House of the Dragon. Gosh, this book is freaking awesome, y'all. Y'all, just read books. It's crazy cool. He's like a historian who goes through not just like the, the normal waking people's history. He goes through all their occult, crazy, insane histories too. And he gives you just the absolute ex exposition of all of it. It's it's amazing, y'all. This this is the stuff they used to cut people's tongues out for for like long time. They used to kill all these guys that ever tried to do this stuff or they just bury it in the Vatican's secret libraries. And they're like, you're gonna have it. Well, you can read it now for yourself and you can understand like, what do these people believe? Like, where do these fairy kingdoms and where did the serpents and dragons and Leviathan, the, the bull cults of Melchizedek and like, what is all this stinking thing of the house of the dragon? Like I grew up in a family that literally believed we were like children, physical offspring, human side of these dragons that like they mingled with women and they had sex with them and they infected their seeds. They have like a parasitic serpent seed that they put inside of people that, that operates within them like a host. I know this is like wild, but they genuinely believe this stuff. Like I'm not even kidding around, you know? And like they, they literally do a ritual where they're infusing that seed into a woman during during a divine right and a dragon looking being comes in and has sex with her okay that's where they then have a, a child that they operate on the surface with back in the days they used to make giants during that process because giants were the kings the god kings on the earth well now the 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 giants that operate are the ones of industry of intellect it's a very different form of what they imbue upon them to make them the divine rulers of a society you make them intelligent you make them capable you make them empowered through wealth and prestige and through good looks and these other arenas well that that all ties into that serpent seed and this is where these blue bloods have their divine right to rule they believe they are carriers of the seed line that's why like i had to re like it took me a while to break out of that mind game that i was unredeemable like i thought i was unredeemable in the book the gospel to every creature 
which is good news for Nephilim, transhumans, enhanced humans, and anyone else who's the result of genetic experimentation by John Darnell. It's a really hard book to find, y'all. I don't I don't have more copies of it beside this one. And yeah, willing, I will scan it and get it out there to you. But he deals with how people who have even come from bloodlines like this, like there's still a desire for free will. There's free will in there that you can still have deliverance and restoration. And so I could go into draconian stuff for a while. It's a freak show stuff, y'all. But no, they're not lizards. They're dragons. Understand that fundamentally. Tungsten bullets are great for them. Tungsten bullets, tungsten spears, this kind of stuff, y'all. Lots of it. That's why I have this stuff everywhere. I'm like, oh I'm, I'm adamantly committed that we got to, we got to do, we're going to be fighting Terminator. I don't know why people don't get this. Terminator <laughs> is the dragon who gave people foretelling. He's like, by the way, these are going to be the generals that you're going to fight in your army. So go kill them. That's what he did to you guys. That's why you're survivors. He's like, why was, why was I chosen out of my family? Because he knew you were going to be his most dangerous adversary. So fight, fight, fight. <laughs> amen i love how on every episode you have all these different weapons that you just whip out they're just hanging out next to you i love it 